And um, when we take that, what we can see when people are doing, when they're doing uh, MRI scans on people that are under the influence of uh, psilocybin mushrooms, is they can see that new areas of the brain is lighting up. So it's kind of like activating other parts of the brain that before was dormant. And it also, we also know that it deactivates this part of our brain called the default uh, mode network, which is responsible for our habitual ways mm -hmm. of being. Every time I went into a deep journey, it was going to a mountaintop and seeing, oh, this is, this is where I can go. And then after the, like coming out of the journey, I would go back to the bottom of the mountain. And then my integration would be, okay, I know this is where I can go. And I would start taking the steps towards this mountain. And then when I would yeah, take another journey, I would go see, an, I would go to another mountain top. Yeah. This is, this is another thing that I experienced a lot is like, especially with many of the people I work with, it's like they, we come in and we want, we expect a quick fix. And yeah, it can open doors. For some people, it's great. It can open doors, but you got to continue to put in the daily work to show up. Yeah. Hello, I'm Mafalda and I'm a health and performance coach. And this is Super Us Podcast. In this episode, we will take you on the journey of the world of psychedelic mushrooms. Today, our guest is Martin, guided by Martin. He works with psychedelic mushrooms and he organizes some retreats. He has also some one-to-one -one coaching and he organizes small ceremonies of magic mushrooms. We will talk about the psychoactive of mushrooms, the impact of this medicine in our body and in our subconscious minds and also in our perception of time, space and ourself. Psychedelic mushrooms have been used for thousands of years for their spiritual and medicinal properties. In recent years, they gained some popularity in recreational use and they raised some concerns in terms of safety. In this episode, we'll be exploring the science behind psychedelic and their potential therapeutic effects. Olá a todos! Meu nome é Mafalda e este é o podcast Super Us. Aqui vou falar de saúde. Seja comida, exercício físico, sono ou tudo o que te possa ajudar a ser a tua versão super. O objetivo da Superas é conseguir criar uma comunidade de outliers, pessoas fora do normal. Pessoas que querem que estar constantemente a melhorar e que não se contentem com estar bem, mas querem estar ótimas. Pessoas que não têm medo de lutar pelos objetivos e pessoas que querem ser super. Hello Martin, how are you today? Hello Mafalda, I am feeling grounded and excited and grateful yeah. amazing thank you so much for accepting to be here with me today it will be my first podcast in english it will be my not my first international um uh person because i already have brazilian here but almost because uh oh, the first one uh, english speaker um, in the podcast. So I'm really excited, not only about the subject, but because also because of that. Um, and normally I start my podcast with the same question. Probably the, most people, the last invited, they already knew because they saw my uh, previous podcast, but probably you don't know because it's in Portuguese. So it will be even nicer. Uh, so who is Martin? That's a great question. You know, like who is Martin? I think where I'm at right now in this stage, Martin is who he needs to be in, in different places. So for example, there's Martin, the facilitator, there's Martin, the friend, there's Martin, the son, there's Martin, the brother, there's Martin, the, the lover, there's Martin, the, the silent, the meditator, the, uh, the mover. Like all of these are, are different roles, different hats that I can take on and and uh, different characters that I've learned to play in this life and I, that I can choose from because I'm aware that I'm these different characters. So I, I would say that's who Martin is. There's probably more characters, but these are just the first yeah. ones that come to my mind. Uh, the main yeah. ones. So I really like this question because 
uh, even if you ask me for maybe a few years ago, uh, most of the people reply this on answering what you do. So where did you study? What What is your job? And so on. And I think it's really nice to hear the different kinds of answer from the people that um, I made this podcast with, because it's really what you said. It's like you have, it's not that uh, you have several identities because it's still uh, one the big uh, the center is still Martin but you have several roles uh, that uh, compose let's say Martin in this case yeah what, what I believe is that we are centers of pure consciousness and will so we all have this unique spark our own uniqueness and the journey is to become more and more aware of this weakness, uh, not weakness, yeah. uniqueness, and being able to bring that out into the world at any given moment. And that requires a lot of inner work because you have to face um, the fear of alienation, the fear of not being liked, the fear of, of uh yeah, like it, it goes back to when we're kids, you know, like when we grow up, we are learning from our caretakers what is acceptable and what is not. And it's breaking with that as we become more and more aware on this journey. Yeah, because and this also can we can introduce our subject with that, because um, I think, of course, that is the the first step is always to have conscious of who we are. And then we have that part that you were saying that it's uh, we we need to have the courage, let's say, to be who we are, let's say. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and introducing a little bit the the subject that uh, we we are here today to talk, uh, and that is the um, let's say the magic ma mushrooms, and let's say demystify a little bit because um, I think it's changing it's changing a little bit uh, how people uh, talk about this but it's still um, I will consider a big taboo for a lot of people so I think it's a really important subject because even science is already saying all the benefits that you can have with this uh, so I think it's important to introduce, to try to, uh, the first question about this that I would like to ask you is, um, in terms of the, the magic mushrooms and the, the, the psychoactive um, ingredient, let's say, how do you think the, these, um, this, these psychedelic mushrooms impact our body and can have the, let's say, the ability to alter uh, our our body and our conscious experience, um, and also the our perception of let's say the time and the space, and also the perception of ourself. Yeah. So what we know right now, and we still don't know too much, is that the psilocybin itself, when we ingest the psilocybin mushroom, let's just talk about that. When we ingest psilocybin, it breaks down to psilocin inside our bodies, and then it attaches to serotonin receptors called the 5-2-HB, I think they're called. And that's how this, the, the mushroom starts working within our systems. And when we take that, what we can see when people are doing, when they're doing uh, MRI scans on people that are under the influence of uh, psilocybin mushrooms is they can see that new areas of the brain is lighting up. So it's kind of like activating other parts of the brain that before was dormant. And it also, we also know that it deactivates this part of our brain called the default uh, mode network, which is responsible for our habitual ways mm -hmm. of being. So this is what we know at least happens within our system. What ha what I would say, and also psilocybin is one of the safest compounds that we know. It's much safer than even paracetamol or, you know, other things that we, we even eat on a daily basis. There is no yeah. lethal doses. You can take 5,000 times the amount of, of, of psilocybin 
and you might trip for three days, but yeah, you will be I fine. Saw... There's no toxicity and there's no Yeah, I saw potential. yesterday one, um, one video that was were talking about the study that basically they measure the um, harm uh, your, the, your self-harm and the, the harm for others from several drugs. Uh, and in the, um, the one with the highest harm, both for ourselves and others, the top one was alcohol. Uh, alcohol, that yes. it's a legal drug. And it's one that uh, majority, I, I, I would not say, I, I would say more than 50% have um one glass at least to twice a week i would say even more but i'm being a little bit conservative here and in the um, opposite spectrum so the one with less harm was mushrooms so and this is already being studied so this also prove what uh, what you were saying yeah yeah, that was that was actually the study that I was drawing from. It compared the harm of of the most of like I think ten or fifteen different kind of substances. Like you say, alcohol was the yeah. the most damaging one in terms of these different parameters, like self harm and also harm to others in society and cost of society. And and like you said, mushrooms was it basically had almost no harm. Yeah. And and I would say especially if you do it in in the right setting and the right like if you know what you're doing and you're working with someone that can guide you through your experience there's a higher likelihood that you know you're going to come out of it for the better and also just to talk about to answer your original question because we just talked about what happens in your body but what, practically what happens is like you can kind of imagine that your your brain is this hill covered with snow and anytime you're taking an action or thinking in a certain way there is like a sled going down that slope of your brain and it creates a, a track and the more times you think in a certain way or you act in a certain way these tracks get deeper and deeper so before you know it you can't do anything else than act in a certain yeah. way or, or think in a certain way so when you are ingesting psilocybin mushrooms or any other kind of psychedelics it's kind of like fresh powdery snow landing on that brain and suddenly you have potential to go anywhere you want. Suddenly you can make your own tracks or new tracks. And you see also often during these journeys, what would be better for you? What would be more healthy, meaningful, purposeful for you in this given moment? You see what's possible. Yeah, I, I love that analogy of the, the track. And <clears throat> the when we go... The amount of times that we, if we increase the amount of time that we go along that track, of course, that it will be, it will start to be automatic in our subconscious to go on that specific track. And um, it's like with mushrooms, we can, let's say, defy our beliefs, the beliefs that we had either by experience or either by um, some things that we heard time and time again. Let's say. Yeah, we become aware of yeah. them. So it's like we, we are in an ocean and we don't know that we are in an ocean. We're in the ocean of our beliefs, beliefs that are not coming from a deeper part of ourselves, but coming from our parents and society, our friends, past lovers. And like you say, when we t ingest these medicines, we become aware of these beliefs that we adopted which not, might not be ours. And we can start choosing what we want and what will serve us. Can you tell us uh, um, how did you start uh, your interest with um, the magic mushrooms and a little bit on how was your first experience with that? Sure. So I tried psilocybin mushrooms for the first time on a beach in Thailand at a full moon party. Uh, 12 years ago and I was pretty disappointed you know I wanted to have a party there was 70,000 people on this beach and I was just I wanted to have a party with all these other people and after ingesting this mushroom all I felt like doing was sitting down and having deep and meaningful conversations with the people around me 
So I was really disappointed. I was like, hmm, that's not what I, I didn't want to, didn't want to do that again. But then uh, it was like eight years ago, the calling started coming back. And I found out that you could pick magic mushrooms in the wild in Denmark, where I'm from. So there you can pick a, a type of mushroom that's called Liberty Caps or Psilocybinensis, I believe it's called. And I picked just enough to have what you would call a museum dose. It's around, yeah, a little bit less than one gram of this type of mushroom. That is like a microdose. It's not no? enough for you to. It's okay. a little bit more than a microdose. So you, yeah, there's all of this is just, but it's not enough for you to mm -hmm. to hallucinate. You do you do start feeling the energy of the mushroom. It's not like you're not. It's not so perceptual okay. anymore, but you're not hallucinating. And I just had so much fun there. Like I was inside of this. This was my first kind of like experience with the mushrooms, and I was just inside and just having so much fun with my partner at the time. Like we're just laughing all the time and just really enjoying ourselves. And later I, because the season ended and I didn't want to wait another year to, to have a higher dose and go deeper into this because I knew I was just touching something on the surface. So I started growing more on mushrooms. I found out that I could buy mushroom kits from Holland. And then, so I began growing more on mushrooms. And just when the mushrooms had finished growing and I had dried them up and I was ready to ingest them, I had to go to a kickboxing tournament, a World Cup. I was on the national team of Denmark in, in kickboxing. And during this World Cup, I, I had a really bad concussion that stopped my kickboxing career. Uh, I couldn't do anything for a month. Um, I could just look into the air and just be. I could just spend a lot of, I just spent a lot of time in nature and I spent a lot of time for myself. Uh, I couldn't do anything else than that. So for me, it was kind of like a one month of meditation of just being in silence and presence. So I was really curious after that time to try the mushrooms that I had grown. So my partner at the time and I, we went into this beautiful park and we, we, we took the mushrooms and I think we took around two and a half grams. And I just realized how the whole world, the whole natural world is alive. Everything, it looked like it was growing all the time. It was so beautiful. Things were changing colors. I just had so much gratitude and appreciation for the, the natural world around me. And after that experience, it just I was like, okay, there's something here. There's something really beautiful and meaningful in, in these uh, expanded experiences. So later that year, I did a yoga and, and, and breathwork teacher training. And there I met this guy. His name was Peter. And Peter was quite experienced with the mushrooms. He'd done many journeys. And he said, hey, Martin, you have to try what's called heroic dose and you're going to do that inside with your eyes closed and 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 with music and i'm going to guide you so i had that experience and for the first time in my life like we ingested mm -hmm. five five grams of golden teachers which is a strain of mushrooms and within i don't know 30 minutes i just everything that i knew as me started vanishing like being a man having a language being from Denmark, all of that just dis disappeared. And it just became this ocean of pure consciousness, pure awareness. And I just felt so much love. And I just felt okay. And I knew, you know, like everything that I was identifying myself from, like you started asking me this question, who are you? And I realized, yeah, I'm, you know, deep down, I'm definitely not a man. I'm definitely not uh, Martin. You know, what I am is, is something much deeper than that. I am this ocean of pure consciousness. That's, that's what I am. And when everything physical that I identify myself will fall away, there's something deeper that will still exist. And I'm part of that. So that gave me a lot of safety and, and really allowed me to, okay, if I die, it's going to be okay. Not to say that yeah. I want to die. I love life, but I'm, I'm okay with the fact of death. Coming out from that experience, I had to write an assignment for university and uh, I hadn't finished it before coming into it. So I had to hand it in that morning. So I just sat down over my laptop and I started writing. And in one and a half hours, I had written six pages and I just edited it and sent it off and I had a, got a really good grade. And 
I was in complete flow. I didn't second guess or doubt myself, which I would normally do a lot. Like it would take me two or three days to write a paper like that. And it took me one and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's like, I, I knew that it, I knew I couldn't do these big journeys all the time because after you've done a journey like this, you're like, wow, that was amazing. It's like you, I'm not going to do think this you, again. It, yeah, the next you year. think it's my, it's like you are more connected with either your intuition or it's like you uh, shut down a little bit your inner critic or something like that. Yeah. Your ego is kind of like, which, which contains the inner critic is kind of just kind of offline or it's yeah. less active. So you can connect to a deeper part of yourself that's very creative and like you say, have strong intuition. And it's easier for you to enter these flow states where you just don't, you just, whatever you feel like is exactly what's happening. There's no second guessing or doubting yourself. It's a beautiful place to be in. And I knew I couldn't do these big journeys all the time, simply just because it requires a lot of integration afterwards. And like realizing that you're not uh, just this human body can be a big thing for a lot of people, including myself. Like, what does that even mean? How, what am I then, you know? And, and coming to terms with that. So I found out that, that I could microdose instead. So I started microdosing. I started microdosing mushrooms. And there I, I was able to find these flow states with the mushrooms on my microdosing days. And it also helped me deal with things like anxiety and stress. I was currently building a business mm -hmm. back then. Uh, I was studying entrepreneurship. Bad idea to study entrepreneurship, just go out and do it. But I studied entrepreneurship at university and I was feeling a lot of stress and anxiety around that all the time. And when I had my microdosing days, that would just vanish and I would just be able to go into this flow states. Yeah. So I just continued to work with the mushrooms and, and um, continue to do deeper journeys. And that just really helped me to, it was kind of like every time I went into a deep journey, it was going to a mountaintop and seeing, oh, this is, this is where I can go. And then after the, like coming out of the journey, I would go back to the bottom of the mountain. And then my integration would be, okay, I know this is where I can go. And I would start taking the steps towards this mountain. And then when I would yeah. take another journey, I would go see, an, I would go to another mountain top. It's like you visualize where you can go. And then of course you, you have the yes. work in between. So you get, you go back to the yeah. base of the mountain and you do the work. And then you visualize again, what is possible, what your, because as, as you said, as you, sh as we shut down our inner critic, we understand that we are much capable that our limitations normally put us, let's say. So yeah. it's, uh, as you said, it's a little bit like shutting down your inner critic and this allows us to see our full potential. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it, it takes us, it connects us to that deep uh, inner spark, our own uniqueness, and also beyond that. Um, some people would call that spark your soul, but also connects us to beyond our soul, whatever terms you want to use, higher self, soul. Um, yeah, yeah, and that is, and, and that is also related to the thing that you say that you, it's not, it's not that you um, you like you, you would like of course to, to die but you lose a little bit the the fear of dying because you connect with your soul and you start let's say understanding that your physical body is just some part of you let's say I don't know if uh, it's the correct way, way to say but the physical part is just uh, some part of you but then you have your soul that um, that will remain, yeah. let's say, yeah. afterwards. I like to, it's, our body is kind of yeah. like a vehicle. I'm just using this vehicle right now. And eventually I will let go of this vehicle and maybe I'll get another vehicle. That would be reincarnation, whatever you believe in. But I believe, you know, I'm just having this vehicle right now. This is this physical body. And it's coming out as, in this expression as Martin, probably been 
in other vehicles and in other lives. I believe that. And in this body, I have emotions and I have a mind. But those things are not me either. I have those things. I can use those things as tools to be and act in the world. But I, deep down, are not those yeah. things. Do, before your experience with uh, mushrooms, do you think you already had this understanding or disbelief, let's say, about uh, your soul and uh, the possibility of um, having, let's say, as you said, the reincarnation and your soul, your body as a vehicle and your soul can uh, live for a long time in different vehicles? Or you think it was the mushroom that brought you this experience? Yeah, the, I, I grew up in a Christian free school and I, used, I was Christian until maybe until I was 11, 12. And then I really started questioning these people and what they were teaching because I saw them teaching one thing and living another, another thing. They're quite hypo hypocritical. And that made me completely just push all spirituality and religion away. And I didn't, it didn't open up to me until I started having these experiences. I realized, oh, there's something beyond just what science can explain and, and rationality and logic. And there is probably something beyond our physical and, and, and matter. You know, there's something beyond that. But for many years, it wasn't until I started working with the mushrooms, yeah, that, that changed. Yeah. That opened a different door. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, so I, I, and now I can talk a little bit about my experiences with mushrooms. I, I only try micro dosing. I didn't try. I, I would like to try. Uh, but as you said, I would like to try in a safe uh, space uh, but I only try the micro dosing and I had two really different experiences of course it was just micro dosing but on the first one it was like you said on uh, in your experience I was just uh, laughing a lot with my boyfriend and we, we were in the middle of the nature uh, we were in the beach but there was no one there So it, it was just, I don't know how many time, how much time it, um, it was. Uh, but it was just, I was just laughing, basically. On the second experience, we decided, okay, we, the last time we went to the beach, so let's go to the beach again. And we went, so it, but it was on the, on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I don't know. So there was a lot of people. So I don't know if it was because all of the people around me But it was like I was just, I just wanted to close down, be like with my head down. And just, I was just, I think I, in a certain point, I, I, I wanted to cry. But then I was ashamed to cry because I was in a public space. But then my boyfriend was asking me, was asking me but why are you afraid to cry? Because you are not afraid of laughing. So why are you afraid to, to cry? If you are in public, it doesn't make sense. But then it was like me and all the people around me. And I, I, I just felt that the people were, let's say, uh, looking at me and judging me. And I think, and this brought, brings me to uh, one thing that I think is really important. That is the space and the conditions, let's say, where we try... Um, mushrooms either microdosing or even more the um, hero dose let's say um so you have just to to ask so you have the micro dose then is the hero dose or you have something in between you have something in between the, the, no there's 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 yeah. many levels okay. in between like you, there's there's you can talk about different levels but normally what they talk about is you talk about yeah. the microdose and it sounds like what you what you just shared with me there was a little bit more than a microdose a microdose is generally for mushrooms between 0.1 and 0.4 for some people it, it's not as much as 0.4 you know that would be high for them 
Each person yeah. is different. Each person has a different sensitivity. Then you have a mini dose, which, which will be from 0 0.4 to like 0 0.6. And you have a museum dose will be from 0 0.7 to around one, one and a half max. And then moderate dose would be around one and a half to two grams. Okay. And then we start going into hero heroic dose territory would be around okay. five grams. So these are like the different okay, levels. So um it was already one year ago but i think it was the third one so the moderate no the between 0 0.8 i think yeah so you did a what do you call a museum, museum dose thing. okay yeah normally that would be like in so there's if you go online and you look for mushroom calculators yeah. there would there's so you, you'll find the one and you can see different trip levels and you probably had like level two experience and it goes up to level okay. five. So level, level five, you know, there's no touch with reality and everything you know as you is gone. Like it feels like your life is a distant dream and you can't even remember who you are, or where you are or where you're from. And it can be very disorienting. That's why I always recommend if you do more than a moderate dose, more than two or two and a half grams, I would always recommend having someone sober with you. Yeah. That can remind you that you're safe. That can remind you that everything will return to normal. And the feeling that you're dying or you're about to lose your mind is a completely normal part of the transformation process. Yeah, yeah, that, that part I think is really important. Um, because, of course, it, you, it alters your experience and your conscious part. So it's important to have someone... Uh, make bringing you to reality and saying you will be okay this is just a part of the process let's say so i think that's yes. why uh, it's really important that when you want to try uh, this to make in a safe environment and as you said uh, better if if there is someone that um, is sober so they can make create this safe space for you yeah, and it's important that they don't, you know, react to whatever is happening for you. If you're like, "Oh, it's so crazy," <laughs> you're like, "Yeah, it's fine." You just you stay you stay calm with them because you know it's it's a normal part of the experience. And then they feel they see, "Oh, this he's calm. Okay, maybe I'm okay." You know, so you need someone that's not also it's not going to react to whatever is happening for you. Yeah. So you need someone that's grounded wherever you choose. I, if you're okay, I would like to come back to the experience because I feel, you know, your experience is so revealing to what, what a lot of people experience is, is they do, and especially mushrooms is quite an introspective experience. It doesn't feel nice to be in a very public space if you do higher doses. If you microdose smaller doses, meaning below yeah. 0 0.4 grams of dried mushrooms, great. You can probably be in a public space, but anything above that, it starts becoming really uncomfortable yeah. for a lot of people. And you can really relax into the experience in the same way. And because mushrooms do bring you generally inwards, they do generally bring those introspective and feeling or into the experiences. And so what I would always recommend is if you are doing more than a microdose, be in a space where you're private and feel safe, especially if you're new to the medicine. If you don't have the confidence or the experience, always do it at home or a place where you feel safe. Yeah. Or you don't have to go anywhere because the experience, even the different strains that we have, some of them can be quite strong compared to others. So you might have one time where it's just hitting you really hard yeah, true. and you want you to be able to just to be able to relax and enjoy. And so that's one part. And then it was interesting what you said about that you wanted to cry and you couldn't allow yourself to do that and uh, god bless <laughs> your uh, your your boyfriend the question does not really you know help you in this current state because there's a part of you that really is feeling that that is not okay to cry and often that comes from our childhood where we you had an experience where it was yeah. not okay to show your sadness where you're told this is not cool you can't do that shut up, go to your room, whatever. 
it can also be from society that we deem hey if for for example boys are told don't cry yeah. be a man so for a lot of boys they definitely don't feel it's okay to cry so but when you're having this experience you're reliving it and that often happens during these journeys and it's really important that we have the spaciousness for ourselves and for the people we are journeying with to allow themselves to go through that experience so just acknowledging you know i feel really afraid to cry and just yeah you feel afraid to cry that's okay and just you feeling oh it's okay that i feel afraid to cry it might allow you to cry but if you like why not you know like then you start question like it doesn't bring the spaciousness for you to actually have that yeah. experience so that might lead to you crying and now being able to cry in your in your normal waking consciousness afterwards that's what these these doors can open it's a very concrete example where then afterwards if you had that experience during this journey you might have felt much more comfortable allowing yourself to cry in the future in any public space. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh, it's really important to have that, um, let's say, that reflection after the experience. Because, of course, that the experience may bring you the knowledge, but you need to recognize what is the knowledge that the experience brings you and how can I either... Um, change my belief, for example, as in this in this case, the the belief that I cannot cry in public, for example. But we need to reflect on what is the um, the knowledge that the experience brings us, so we can do something or work on that specific belief. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. Um, yeah, I think that I have, as I said, I have re two different experiences. And as you said, I think the main difference between the two experiences was the the setting. So in one, I was I was in the same place, basically. But in one, one day, it was a lot of people there. And the other day, there was no one. Uh, but yeah, for sure that the, the setting, it's really important. And as you said the um, because it's a more inward experience is important that um, there is not so many people uh, around you um, it's in general for some people it's not but for most people especially at higher doses it becomes a more of an inward okay. experience and in and including in the setting there's also the people who you're journeying with which is very important because maybe if you had felt safe and if you're if you had felt safe and held in your experience you might have allowed yourself to feel and, and go to mm -hmm. to that place where you would allow yourself to cry yes but maybe but and maybe you know you needed to be there in the public in order just to become aware of it you know it's, it's all perfect in that way but then if you had felt safe enough you would allow yourself to cry in this public space. You become aware of it, and you'd you had allowed yourself to go there. Yes, yes, that's true. So, so, so yeah, I think it depends, as you said, um, up on the situation. Um, for example, before you were talking about in one of your experience that uh, you felt that um, it was like pure love. You said something um, like this. And I remember that uh, a few days ago I was seeing um, a video where they were talking about one, I don't know if you heard, uh, one experience in a prison, a, a jail, uh, where basically they gave, um, uh, I don't know, I don't remember what was the, the amount, the dose, the amount of the dose. Uh, of magic mushrooms, but they gave to half of the people on the people on the trial uh, magic mushrooms, um, and to the other half they give just a placebo. And basically, the people that had the mushrooms, they have, I think it was twenty something percent less crimes after they leave jail the ones with 
um, the this the, the magic mushrooms uh, those and they of course they, they didn't explain exactly why but um what they said that, that this may be connected to the um, the sense of love and the sense of unity that you feel with the world when you have this experience yeah you don't feel like robbing your brother or your sister yeah. You don't feel like shooting someone or beating someone who is you on a deep level. On a deeper level, it's you. When you come to that realization, you know, everyone is just your brother and your sister. You can't yeah. do that stuff to someone because you're doing it to yourself. You can have that realization in these medicines. Yes, exactly. So it's like you are um, one with the world, one with nature, let's say. Yes. That's, you know, that's one of the reasons why psychedelics was banned back in the 60s and, and, and 70s when they did the war on, on, on drugs was because people started questioning, why do we go to war? And they're trying to draft people for the Vietnam War at this time. And they couldn't because people are like, I'm not going to go to another country and kill people that, why would, <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense. I, I'm not going to go and kill my brothers and sisters. Yeah, they may be Vietnamese, but yeah. they're still my brothers and sisters. So people were having those experiences and started questioning the reality. They started questioning the government and, and what was be the, the agenda that was being put forth. And you don't want that when you're trying to, you know, put forward an agenda. It's really hard to control people that are asking questions and are free thinkers and free individuals. Yeah. What do you think? And because... Um, and we are talking be before we start the podcast about one of your projects that you have that is the, um, uh, the retreat for entrepreneurs what do you think that is the um, uh, that mushrooms can have on creativity we already talked a little bit about the effects on limiting beliefs but what do you think is um, the relation with the creativity? So like I talked about before, it sparks new centers in the brain. So like more of your brain is talking together. If you are, have a tendency to just be in your logical, rational part of your brain, what it does it creates a bridge to a more abstract part of your brain and suddenly these are talking together so you get completely new inputs new connections so that sparks creativity but a lot of our creativity is blocked from limiting beliefs like i am not creative or um, or just that critic and judge a lot of the people that i work with they have a very strong strong judge they're often spending a lot of time in their heads the biggest challenges they're dealing with is things like stress and overthinking and often a lot of them also deal with depression they are struggling with their relationships and loss of meaning so they might have been doing something for a while and suddenly something serious happens like they go through a deep breakup or they lose uh, someone close to them and then they just really start questioning why why am i doing what I'm doing this doesn't feel meaningful to me anymore or what how will I look at my life when I'm at my deathbed so start asking them deeper they start asking themselves deeper question and it often these leads to like a loss of 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 just motivation and often depression follows from that so these are some of the people that I work with and you don't feel creative when you're yeah. in those states but the, the mushrooms can, can help them see, you know, what would feel meaningful, and especially the process that we use with the preparation and, and the, the retreat itself and integration afterwards helps to unlock those uh, parts that have been, been locked. Yeah, I think, so. as you said, um, because, you, because of the, your inner critic, you have these limiting beliefs. Uh, also, um, I think because of this inner critic, this can lead also to fear of failure. And 
what I'm guessing is that because you have this pure love, not only with others, but only with yourself, you start not um, pushing yourself so hard when you force, you fail because it's you start uh, being more self-compassionate, not only with others, but with yourself. So you start losing a little bit. You may start losing this fear of failure that in consequence, let's say, start allow you to start being more creative because you you are not constrict to the to a, a box let's say because everything outside is uh, you are afraid of you you it's like you throw these walls of this box and these limiting beliefs and these fears and you start you allow yourself to be more creative Yeah, I think there's several things moving here. One is for a lot of people, it's the outward focus versus the inner focus. The outward focus is like, what does other yeah. people think or what would they, how would they, there is there this fear of judgment and the inward focus when things start to shift is when people are just doing it for them. They're doing it because they enjoy it just because they're like, that's, that's what makes me come alive. That's what I enjoy doing. And and then in terms of this fear of failure, which happens for a lot, especially very successful people, is they have a failure that is so big after they you know, build wealth or build a company or whatever, and suddenly that everything is taken away from them. And I see a lot of them are afraid to rebuild that. Like they are completely hit the bottom, they lose everything. And then coming back, there's this fear of failure. There's this fear that all of this will happen again because they had this one experience of losing yeah. control. And what I experienced there is they are, a lot of them are still stuck in their perfectionist. So they want this to be perfect again and they want to do everything that they did before exactly as they were doing it. But they are, they have to rebuild themselves. They were completely taken apart and now they have to rebuild themselves. And they're going to be a much better version. They're going to be, you know, it would be, if I had to rebuild myself, I'll be Martin 2.0. <laughs> but I still have to start from yeah. the foundation, you know? Like a lot of people, you know, if they have good practices and they have good work routines, all of that falls away. They have to start from the bottom. And not the idealistic state. Let's say, you know, I used to work out every day for one hour. No, maybe I just start by doing five push-ups every day that's my foundation and I just start building from there. So like maybe I want to do one hour of workouts every day, but I'm starting with the five push-ups. That's what I can commit yeah. to. And the, you know, when we start doing that with everything we want to do, whether it's being creative or uh, doing good stuff for ourselves, then everything else just follows along from there. But we have to figure out what is it we want ideally, and then what can I actually commit to right now that doesn't feel like it's creating so much resistance inside because people, they fail because they're like, yeah, I'm going to start eating healthier. I'm going to start yes. moving. I'm going to start meditating. I'm going to start doing breath work and journaling and all these all things. things. And I'm like, great. That's not going to happen, bro. Start, start just by, you know, whatever you feel is most important. Let's say that's working out, exercising. Start with those five push-ups. Or if it's meditating, start with, with one minute. Maybe you want to do one hour, ideally, but just start with one minute and keep showing up for yourself every single day. Yeah. And you can do that when it's so easy, you can't say no, you can show up every single day. I can sit down, do one deep breath. Great, that was my meditation today. And tomorrow I will do two, whatever. But I will start with the foundation this can, because when we're building habits or building our character and who we are, it's about continuing to showing up and continuing to say, hey, this is who I am. I'm someone who meditates, even though yeah. it's just one minute. And then we, can, we, we start building the habit of showing up and not of meditation. But it allows us to do whatever we want to do. But we got to start with that small step. Yeah, first. it's true. And I think one thing that you said that is it's um, really important that um let's say we all have uh 
difficulties building some new habits because it's, it's, it's automatic in us and some things we do automatic because it's already an habit and it's uh, hard to either to break or to start a new habit. But it's I think it can be especially hard when we already did that specific habit in the past, like, like you were saying that uh, you already had the success and now for some reason you are not on the same place and you need to rebuild yourself and this can have can have some um, extra effort uh, both physically and mentally to deal that okay i was he i was already where i want to be in the past but there was a lot of things between the past and now so i need to rebuild myself yeah yeah it's for some people you need to start over yeah but but know that like once you learn to ride the bike bicycle you can easier get back on it again. Yeah. Yeah. When if you if you learn something it will be easier to get back. Like you don't have to start completely from zero, but more or less from yeah, zero. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but that as you said required not only the the physical strength to do the again the five push ups, but the mental to be self-compassion with you, with ourselves saying okay uh, you are restarting again yeah. but it's okay you will get there as as you get there as you already did in the past you will get there again just give it time and but this mentally and emotionally can have some can have some hardship uh doing it yeah, and, and one of the things that I find helps me to make these changes is, is microdosing. So taking small amounts of psychedelics on a regular basis, I find that increases my presence and ability to make changes. So I'm more aware, oh, now I'm about to do something, which is I want to do a different, I want to choose something else. So I realize my habitual ways. So I have a more, I have more space. There's more time between me doing something mm -hmm. habitually and oh actually i can i want to do this instead so i can start making these changes and especially after bigger journeys like moderate doses and above i find that i have a period of up to three months six months even sometimes where everything seems to become easier remember i talked about the uh, the snow on the brain it's like kind of that snow stays yeah. there for a while and you have you have it's so much easier to make changes after an experience like that. Yeah, but uh, uh, do you think microdosing it helps with, um, um, let's say, entering flow state that help you in consequence to yeah. be more focused and to be more productive, productive in whatever what uh, you are doing. Yeah, definitely, especially with LSD is one of my favorites for being out in the world, being creative, being productive, having focus. It lasts for quite a long time and is really good for being in the external world, like for acting and being in the external world. And it's really good for changing habits as well because it lasts for 12 hours normally. So you have the full day to work with. Let's say you wanna uh, reduce uh, anxiety or bring more peace into your life. So you'll have that awareness of what are the things that makes you feel more anxiety? What are the things that makes you feel peaceful? And then you will start seeing, okay, these are the things you have the awareness to see. Oh, actually, when I put too little time between meetings or I, yeah, whatever makes you feel anxious and stressed, you start becoming aware of those triggers and you have the ability to change them. So you don't, make it yeah. your life so hard because a lot of the stuff we're experiencing is self-created it's just because we didn't have the awareness when we did it yeah uh, and we already talked about let's say what could be the um, let's say the benefits on on the micro dosing that is mainly if i understood the um, entering is it's and it's easier to enter flow states and uh, for more higher doses means higher doses means more medium and high doses, right? For the more inward inward uh, work, let's say. And for the 
small dose um, and anything in between do you think what do you think are the benefits for the doses in between the micro and the high doses I would say anything above a microdose I would not do in my like I would not do in my daily yeah. life and and different doses is have like the higher the dose the more integration you probably need yeah. afterwards and I find you know depending on your activity you from personally if I'm taking I would say up to a moderate dose you could probably do that while being uh, in nature if you have experience mm -hmm. but of course this is just this is just my own subjective yeah. op opinion different people have different experiences anywhere above you know three grams for mushrooms I would not do outside in nature I would always unless I had a secluded space where I could not move for several hours and I would have a guide with me a sober guide and uh, below that you know, different dosages will elicit different experiences. So it's really yeah. hard for me to say, oh, you know, this will do that. But I would say if you're choosing to work with these medicines on a regular basis, like normally you would microdose every other day or every yeah. three days. And it's, it's not something you, it's something that will enhance your life just a little bit. But if you start to feel that it's making you distracted and losing focus, you took yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. When when I was asking the benefits, it was not. Um, it was more to understand because uh, you can take different doses depending depending on the purpose that you want to put in each. For example, if you want to have a more inward experience and you want to, um, let's say, trying to access some beliefs limiting beliefs then you will probably need higher doses so depending on the purpose uh, because I think it's important to uh, and correct me if I'm wrong um, for the higher the dose I think it's important it's more important to put an intention on why you want to do the to I would say any, for any 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 dose you take, any dose you take, whether it's a micro dose or high dose, you got to yeah. work with your intentions. That's that is my clear belief. This is because the attention helps you. It creates a clear path for you. It helps you to organize and, and bring structure to your experience. And it helps you to to put the experience in some kind of context. Yeah. So I would say no matter what, I would always work yeah, with it. It helps you explore which mountain you want to visualize, let's say. Yes, and sometimes, or not sometimes, but I would say every time you always get what you need and not always what you want. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. But you always get what you need. Um, and... In terms of um, safety and, uh, let's say, uh, legality of uh, magic mushrooms, what do you think are the important, let's say, safe considerations um, taking psychedelic mushrooms? Yeah, so... Safety is a big, big topic, but just in terms of getting the mushrooms, you know, it's legal to buy kits from Holland, for example, and get them shipped to here and, and having the kits, not just in Portugal, but like all over Europe, you can have the boxes with the mycelium that's in most countries, mm -hmm. not illegal, but having the fruiting bodies, the mushrooms itself is illegal. So in most countries in Portugal is decriminalized, meaning you can have and possess for your own use. Um so and if you are deciding to get from other people, I would say know your source. Yeah. If you're communicating with someone, always use encrypted platforms such as Telegram or Signal or uh, Session is another platform. Always use encrypted platforms mm -hmm. like that. And if yeah, 
like a lot of people message me on, on Instagram and WhatsApp and I just say, hey, you know, I can't help you in this, this regard. You have to, like, that doesn't work. You, need, you really have to be careful in, in this, this matter and, and how you choose to communicate. Um, so that's one, one aspect. Uh, in terms of personal safety, I would say start small. Always much more like start with a microdose, figure out, you know, like learn as much as you can about this medicine that you're about to ingest, whether it's mushroom or something else. Figure out what is the dose you just get a prop proper scale and start small and start within the confinements of your home or another place where you feel safe and preferably with someone that you know. And then slowly build your way up if that feels right, you know, like don't just do it because you're like oh now i'm gonna test out like take the time yeah maybe you reach a dose at one point and you feel like fuck uh, this is this is really intense i need time to process this i would say it's important in terms of safety to have people in your in your um, in your network that you can share these experiences with so you're not alone and really have someone that can check you because there are people that they decide they want to do a journey every week or every other week and they become more and more ungrounded. You cannot continue to do these medicines without integrating yeah. the experiences, meaning, okay, something is coming up for me. I'm, I'm, this is what I saw. What does that mean for my life? And what am I going to do differently now that I have this learning? And once you feel, yeah, this is a part of my life now, okay, I would say you can pick up the mushroom phone again and, yeah. and get another yeah. message. I but it's, it's yeah no yeah. i think that part that you were just uh, talking it's really important it's having and as we said in the beginning is understanding okay what is the top of the mountain but then after the the journey what we need to do to uh, go up on this mountain because it's not only visualizing the top of the mountain we need to do something in between we need to try to change we need, we yes. need to try to improve with whatever we learn in the journey. And I think this is a really important point in everything. It's not that, of course, for example, uh, and we, we talk already also about uh, alcohol. Alcohol, it just sedates us in whatever we are feeling. And the purpose of, um, yeah. uh, the, of mushrooms shouldn't be that. It should, should be that show us, bring uh, conscious to ourselves on something that we want according our intention that we set and then we need to take some actions in whatever we found yeah and a lot of people they they think or feel that oh now for example in, in your example about the crying let's say that you experienced you had this experience and you did cry during your journey for you you might oh i'm healed no that's an opening that's an opening. Now that's something that's possible for you to do in the future. But you have to continue to bring awareness to that before that becomes an integral part of your life. So a lot of people are like, oh, I had this one experience and now everything is good. No, that's just an opening. You have to continue to bring awareness to that aspect until it becomes part of your life. And that's often mistaken, especially in this kind of culture. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go and, oh, yeah, I cried a little bit. I released some emotions. Great. What are you going to do about yeah. it? True. I think that is, um, I would say, one of the main considerations, not the main main thing that we talk here today, but one of the main things, uh, main considerations that is uh, beginning, setting up the intention, and then after the journey, integrate and reflect and put some actions on whatever we experience on the journey yeah because this doesn't just go for working with uh, plant medicines or psychedelic medicines it's also for everything else that we're doing in life okay you went through a really hard breakup what did you learn about yourself yeah. and this partner what do you want and what don't you want what were you wounding Okay, someone died. What does that say about you? Who do you like? How, how do you want to be remembered when you die? Like, are you living the life you want to live? 
like those are the questions we need to be asking ourselves when we are experiencing stuff that makes us like we lose our job, you know, whatever. What is my responsibility here? What is my role in this? What am I going to do differently? And that's our integration, not just with the plant medicine, yeah, but true. in our life. Like our whole life becomes a ceremony this way. Yeah. And and that's the that's the honest truth. We don't need plant medicine. We don't need psychedelics to do this. Yeah. It can be helpful sometimes when we're stuck, but we don't need it. Yeah, I think. Uh, and yeah. this is an, yeah. This is this is another thing that I experienced a lot. Is like especially with many of the people I work with. It's like they we come in and we want we expect a quick fix. And yeah, it can open doors for some people. It's great. It can open doors, but you got to continue to put in the daily work to show up. Yeah. You, that's that's the only thing that will truly make a difference and changes in your life. Yeah, and I think um, the mushrooms, as you said, we don't exactly need the mushrooms to have all these insights, but of course that maybe the mushrooms can accelerate this process of uh, having conscious of our limiting beliefs and so on. Uh, maybe we can do this with meditation, for example, but we need to have long experience with meditation and have uh, meditated for a long time long time and um, not one hour but for several days or several years years maybe not days sorry uh, and um, and as you said it's like bring conscious to everything that we are doing being more present in whatever that we are doing and having some some learnings in whatever failure or whatever that it doesn't go as we expected yeah also one thing i want to add to safety i know i'm jumping a little bit but people that are suffering from any kind of personality disorders bipolar and psychotic episodes schizophrenia they should not be taking psychedelics. There's a high chance that it's going to make them mm -hmm. more unstable. So I feel that's a very important risk warning as well to just to share. Or anyone who is in a place in their life where they don't have stability, you know, you need to have at least a good support network or friends and family, or a place where you, you have a, a, you know, a roof over your head, you have food, or a job like those are some of the things that gives us that safety and stability and we i feel it's important if you are deciding mm -hmm. to work with medicine that you have at least one or two of these pillars otherwise it can be very destabilizing especially the support network is probably one of the most important ones yeah so i just wanted to say that about the uh, the safety yes it, it makes sense because of course that uh, as you said uh, mushrooms will bring you not what you want but what you need and maybe yes. the process of yes. what you need and what you need to do with these learnings may be a little bit hard and of course it is really important to to have that support as you said yeah for example uh, i did a ceremony this weekend a group ceremony and one of one of the people there, she she had some realizations about things that was really hard for her to accept. I don't know the details of what it was, and I don't mm -hmm. need to know in, in terms of, of the process. But you know, sometimes we become aware of stuff from our past, stuff that our parents did or stuff that happened to us that can be really hard to accept, and we need to grieve that. And we need we need this, the safety and the space to grieve that, so that we need our, our home or mm -hmm. a home. And we need we need uh, spaces where we can feel safe enough to go through that grief. That's just one example. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and just one thing that we didn't um, touch that I thought in the beginning to talk that I think it will be interesting is we talk a little bit about um, the the ben the mushrooms and how they can work help us in the limiting beliefs and the creativity. Um, what do you think, and it's already, of course it is related, what do you think the, um, that could be the, the role 
of the mushrooms in terms of thera more therapeutic use in cases like, for example, depression. just taking a moment to, to think here because I feel we might have covered it but really like we spoke about earlier in terms of depression it's a lot about people being stuck in the same pathways and ways yeah. of thinking so they're going in these loops and the psilocybin can break these loops a lot of the challenges we're experiencing in our life is because we're going in loops in terms of our actions and behaviors so we say oh I don't want to feel lonely but we keep doing stuff that pushes people away we say yeah. oh people always leave me but in reality most of our we are leaving ourselves we, we are leaving in the relationship like we are saying no more and then we say but the story we're telling ourselves is people are leaving me so was, i i feel you know it's helping us to break these patterns of what we don't want and we don't realize that we're actually yes. creating it ourselves in our lives we're like Oh, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be disrespected in my relationship or I don't want to, and then we're just doing stuff where we're disrespecting ourselves. Yes. And, and it's just so, so funny. And we become aware of that when we work with these medicines. So the therapeutic effects is becoming aware of the ways that we are being that is keeping us in a certain way that is triggering our anxiety, that is triggering us feeling sad it opens doors that we most likely would not have been able to open ourselves. And, and I would say it makes talk therapy, like there's a part of me that's, that feels that talk therapy is very, um, doesn't work for a lot of mm -hmm. people. It doesn't, there are certain modalities that do work. Like I find parts work and somatic experiencing is very helpful, but it's more, of a feeling oriented experience for people and less about processing it with yeah. the mind and talking. But I find when you combine the talk therapy with these medicines, then we start having the therapeutic effects because people, they activate their own healing intelligence. And basically the therapist is just holding space for a process that can then start to unfold automatically. Yes. Um, so I feel it's just activating our inner healing intelligence and letting stuff move along it's kind of clearing the pipes so suddenly we can flush yeah. the toilet again it's uh, finding <laughs> our inner power yeah. yes and uh, and as you say, one thing that uh, you you were saying that remind me i think uh, is like where there is a, a song that has the in on the the lyrics is when your where your focus go your energy flows and uh, when, yeah. as you were saying, when we are trapped on these loops, we are always focusing on the same thing. So our energy is always going to the same place, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to add something, if you want to share anything else. Yeah, I appreciate this time, Afalda. Thank you for, for having me on. Like if people want to connect with me, I'm, I'm in Lisbon. I offer breathwork once a week in currently in our same soul uh, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Also, I do microdosing hikes at least once a week and mostly on Wednesdays, but also have one Sunday or Saturday a month. And those can be found on Airbnb, actually. And then I do bi-monthly bi ceremonies for the community here as a way to make this medicine available to people. So, yeah, I feel it's important that we create spaces where it's possible to have these experiences. So, yeah, if people want to connect with me, also I, the people I work with on one-on-one -on -one and also for the group retreats, the several-day retreats, the five-day uh, retreats, are mostly entrepreneurs and leaders. So yeah, those are the people I, I, I normally work with one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason for that is, 
yeah, I find that this is where my skill set is, is best suited. And also what I really want to create in this world is, is my vision to empower 100 million people in this life. And what I believe I will do that with is by creating spaces, uh, like retreat centers and spaces where people that can learn the fundamentals of living happy and healthy f human lives, how to eat, sleep, move, hydrate, meditate, breathe, things that nobody teaches yeah. us in school. And these places will be completely donation based and volunteer run. And I see that the people I'm working with is the founding fathers and mothers of this. That's that's what I can already see. I can already see that <laughs> happening uh, with the people I'm working with right now. So I'm, I'm just I'm just going to continue this path. And I know in the next two to three years, I'm going to have the first couple of centers. But if people want to work with me, they can uh, find me on Guided by Martin uh, on Instagram and everywhere else. I'm also guidedbymartin.com on, on the internet. And uh, there you can find these different events that we're we're having, everything within self-exploration and personal growth. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you again for uh, accepting the invitation to be here uh, with us. I will share on the description your your social media so people can uh, visit all of your amazing work and uh, projects. Um, and I hope we can meet again. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mafalda. Like we, I know you said you wanted to do the uh, this. Uh, you wanted to work more with the mushrooms. I would invite you to come to the ceremony you're probably going to do in May. That all all your ceremonies you said you are in Lisbon, right? Yeah, those those bi bi monthly ceremonies, they are are happening either in Sintra or Rapida. Ah, yeah. so like 30, 30, 40 minutes yeah. from Lisbon. Next yeah. one is in in May. You said. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that one is with the um, higher dose, right? Okay. Yes. And can you explain a little bit how is the the ceremony? You you are with the um, not you the people that uh, participate are blindfolded or are or you have some kind of open eye meditation? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So before people even come, I have them fill out a form to make sure that they are they are suited for this experience. And I have them fill out some questions before to just reflect and, and set intentions and get in the right mind state, see what's what is moving on the yeah. emotional and, and mental space. And then on the, the, the ceremony day, which is, is an overnight ceremony as we're doing it right now, people, they come, we start with a meditation and then we I explain, you know, what's mm -hmm. going to happen. And then we uh, we have a sharing circle, people sharing their intentions. And then from there, we start working with some some partner yoga to connect people and just ground yeah. them in their bodies, connecting to their breath. And really what that does, it does two things. Once it, connect, it connects people to the, to the others around them, because one of the things I see is you don't know the other people there. You yes. want to feel safe to relax. So suddenly when you've been in physical contact with someone else you already feel so much closer to someone and that makes you relax and feel safe and especially if you've been breathing together with someone for half an hour 40 minutes and really just what i'm teaching them is because some of these stretches are quite uncomfortable so like teaching people to breathe for yeah. discomfort so like that is that is part of this preparation and then we do some journaling just to get clear on what's mm -hmm. moving for them like getting the last anxiety thoughts out if there's any and really getting clear on the intention. And then I serve the mushrooms and cacao and people are laying down with blindfolds on and they mm -hmm. go on their journey. And there's a specific playlist that I created for these kind of journeys that, that is played. And then the ceremony closes during the night and then the day after we have breakfast and then we do integration. Um, so that's people have a chance to share their experience with another integration body. And from there they will you know, they just continue to, um, to like after they share with the integration body, they have a time for that each. And then they 
decide what they want to do as integration, as their integration practice. And then we do a sharing circle in the end. And that's, that's the experience for now. And that one is in when in May? I have in the founder's okay. final date, but it will be on, it will be, it will be on my, I'll share it on okay. Instagram and uh, my, my web page. Okay, good. If I, I'm not sure if I will be in Portugal because I think I'm going um, to Brazil next week or week after, but if I'm in Portugal, Amazing. yeah, for sure. If I'm in Portugal, for sure, I, I will want to go. Okay. Thank you Thank so much, you. Mafalda. Thank you. You just heard another podcast, Superas. I hope this podcast helped you demystify a little bit magic mushrooms. I also hope you start seeing this medicine, not as you see other drugs like alcohol or like cocaine. And I hope you can start seeing it as a tool to help you find your full potential. If you like this video, you can put a like. You can also subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you receive a notification each time I launch a new video. If you want to learn more about my coaching program, you can send me an email to mafalda.superas at gmail.com. See you in the next video and let's start building your super version together. Thank you.